It all started with the tools we know and love. Tools such as SolidWorks and SolidWorks Simulation. But as our society evolves, the technologies and tools we use also need to evolve. Whereas now we have tools such as SolidWorks Connected, 3D Shape, X-Design, and several Simulia tools for structures, plastics, and electronics. We're bringing more tools to your fingertips by blurring the line between SolidWorks and CATIA by way of the 3D Experience platform. If you take what I just said into consideration, it only makes sense based on our recent history that we should expect schematic capture capabilities to be included within the 3D Experience platform. Let me introduce you to Electrical Schematic Designer. Electrical Schematic Designer is an intelligent schematic design tool that helps improve electrical system development speed and quality, all while storing vital project information within the platform. Before we dive straight into what Electrical Schematic Designer has to offer, we need to understand how this tool interacts with the 3D Experience platform. Welcome to Smoothie Co. We design, manufacture, and assemble a variety of commercial frozen beverage machines. Beverages such as fruit smoothies, frozen margaritas, and other delicious beverages. We also package and distribute our own line of liquid flavor packs that are specifically designed to be used within our machines. Our electrical engineering team is responsible for both sides of our business, which includes each drink machine's internal electrical design and the overall electrical system for our automated liquid filling machines. Let me introduce you to the team. First and foremost, is our electrical engineering manager, Vandana. She definitely has her hands full, being in charge of all the electrical systems our company develops. Her team includes Eric and Vance, who work on the commercial product line, as well as Thomas and myself, who work on the automated liquid filling equipment. Our company has had some incredible success over the past couple of years, and therefore, we're expanding, which means we need to increase production, which in turn means it's time to upgrade our equipment. This upgrade will also give us an opportunity to explore new design tools for our engineering teams. Naturally, we defined some requirements as we began to evaluate new design solutions. Some of those requirements include staying on track with deadlines, communicating design intent, expressing logistical concerns, generating accurate project reports, and even sharing or collaborating directly with our customers. After careful consideration, our engineering team has made the decision to utilize the power of the 3D experience. The team has just started exploring and interacting with the 3D experience platform and we're getting our feet wet with some of the collaboration tools we want to utilize. First, I'm going to create a brand new dashboard. This new interface will really help us organize our company's engineering information and schedule, as well as keep track of any associated electrical data. So I have to give it a name. So let's call it SmoothieCo Electrical Internal Dashboard. I'll also give it a description so we all know that this is our internal dashboard. As of right now, I'm the only one who has access to this new dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and invite the entire electrical team so we can begin to interact. I'm going to assign everyone as a contributor for now. That way they can start adding content but not necessarily change certain settings. It is nice to know that we can set permissions within each dashboard, especially for specific use cases, like during the summer months when we'll need to provide access to our interns, or maybe when we're sharing information with a contractor. Now comes the fun part. 
what types of information should we display within our dashboard? Ultimately, what do we want our dashboard to look like? There are a lot of different tools that we can use. Well, the first one we decided to add was a new 3D Swim community. Within this new community, we can include content we've created through a simple post, an idea we want to share, ask a question, conduct a survey, or maybe by adding specific media related to our projects. In addition to the community, I've set up a conversation between the members of our team. Similar to a text message or a chat window on your computer, but instead it's directly integrated within the platform. Besides adding posts and other content to our new community, we needed a way to store our engineering documents. All of our projects, models, assemblies, schematics, spec sheets, you get the idea. That's where 3D Drive and 3D Space come into play. Now, they each have their rightful place within the platform, and it's good to know where your information should reside. 3D Drive is very similar to other online storage solutions, where we can store our files and share them with both internal and external users of 3D Experience. An added bonus, we can actually connect those other storage accounts to 3D Drive, making it even easier to access information. Similar to 3D Drive, 3D Space also allows us to store information. However, it is directly tied to Anovia, which allows us to access even more capabilities within the 3D Experience platform. Looking at it from a different point of view, 3D Space allows us to manage our data like a product data management solution with workflows, maturity states, and permissions. Adding content is very easy. I can choose to add content and browse for the file I want to upload, or simply drag and drop my files into the desired location. Besides an intelligent storage solution, we need a method to organize and assign ownership to our projects, and more importantly, the tasks that are associated to those projects. A very powerful tool that caught our eye when we first started evaluating the platform was the project planning application. My manager Vandana gravitated directly towards this application because it helps keep track of all the different tasks that our team is responsible for. Speaking of which, Vandana just informed me that she's about to add several new tasks for our team. Creating a task is very easy. Type the title of the task and select Add or Add and Open. Personally, I prefer to select Add and Open, which automatically opens the task details. We can add a description to help everyone understand what the task is for, set a priority level for the task, set a maturity state, as well as select a start date and either a planned end date or an estimated duration for the task completion. We can also include any necessary attachments and deliverables. And most important, assign a team member to the task for completion. I just received a notification that Vandana has assigned several new tasks. First up, I have to start researching new proximity sensors for one of our conveyor systems. Once we've decided on the appropriate sensor, I'll tackle the rest of the tasks, such as ordering the parts, editing the information in our schematics, updating our reports, and eventually installation. In order to let everyone know I've started the task, I'll move the task to the In Work column. Now it's time to dig in and research those new proximity sensors. I've narrowed down the search for new sensors to two possible options. I've uploaded a couple images, spec sheets, and some comments to our community so that the rest of the team can provide feedback. 
I'm also going to move the research task from in work to completed. On to the next task. Since this is an upgrade to the existing machine, it's time to edit the existing schematic. Let's prepare for the next major step in utilizing the 3D Experience platform, Electrical Schematic Designer. Electrical Schematic Designer is the platform connected schematic capture tool that our team is going to utilize for all of our future projects because our company is committed and is moving forward with its cloud initiative. Opening Electrical Schematic Designer is easy. Just like all the other platform applications, we open the schematic tool through the compass. Once the application is open, the project manager becomes available. This manager is where I can perform operations such as retrieve, open, or save our projects. We notice that there are no available projects, so we're going to want to load our project from the server, which really means we're going to be connecting to the 3D space. 3D space can hold a lot of files. Conveniently, Electrical Schematic Designer automatically filters for project files, making it easier for me to find the exact file that I'm looking for. As we grow with the platform and begin to add more projects, the search functionality will really come in handy. After selecting the desired project from the 3D space, our project becomes available within the project manager, at which point we can now open it. At first glance, we observe the organization of our project's document tree, which is easy to understand and totally customizable. If this were a new project, now would be the perfect time to reorganize this project to match our company standard. Just to show you how easy it is, I'm going to add a new book, add a couple folders, some sheets, and let's add a data file, which in my case is the spec sheet for the proximity sensor we're going to use. The data file feature is very convenient because I can embed the spec sheet right into the project so I don't have to search for it every time I need it. Okay. Let's get back on track because I need to add these new proximity sensors to the project. I already know that I don't have the correct proximity sensor symbol in my library, so I'm either going to have to build it or better yet, find it. Electrical Schematic Designer also provides a new panel that allows us to connect directly to the ECP, which stands for the Electrical Content Portal. Through this new interface, I have the ability to search for a wide variety of manufacturer parts and symbols. So let's do a quick search for the word proximity and see what comes up. I'm also going to apply a filter to only search for symbols because I'm not overly concerned with the actual manufacturer part data yet. Here's a good one that should work. I'm going to download it, select it, and run through the unarchiving wizard in order to add it to our database. Now it's available so we can add it to the project. I'm going to start by opening the desired schematic sheet and inserting the new symbol we just grabbed. There's actually a couple different ways to insert a symbol. First being the standard insert symbol command. I can pick the symbol, rotate it if I want to, and automatically add a mark. The second option is also nice, whereas I can search for a symbol based on its name, then double click or drag and drop the symbol right into the schematic. At this point, we can add the appropriate manufacturer part information as well as any additional component properties we want to include. I already know that the manufacturer part information does not yet reside within my database, but it's nice to know that I have a couple different options in order to add the necessary information. Option one, we can go back to the electrical content portal and perform a search amongst the millions of available parts. Option two, 
if you're coming from another tool, you can import your existing data by running it through Electrical Schematic Designer's Import Wizard. Or option three, you could manually enter the information from your spec sheet. Personally, I say to each his own, whatever path you find easiest, go for it. For me, I actually like entering the information myself. Luckily, I have some solid teammates. Thomas just sent me a message through our team chat using the conversations tool within 3D Experience that he's already gone ahead and entered all of the part information and uploaded it to 3D Space. So now, back within Electrical Schematic Designer, I will grab the part by loading it from the server. Depending on how many parts I have in my 3D Space, I can utilize the search functionality to help me narrow down my options. I'm going to simply select the file and the part is automatically added. It's also nice to know that this functionality is available for all types of electrical schematic designer files, such as projects, symbols, cables, or even an entire environment. I need to continue building the schematic by adding a few more components and the associated wires. But before I continue, I really want to draw attention to a feature that I believe is worth mentioning, called a macro. This macro functionality allows me to take a component that includes all of its manufacturer part information and save it for future use. Now, this isn't a copy-paste like we used to do with our old tool. It's being added to our database. So, when I shut my computer down at the end of the day, unlike copy-paste, the macro is still available when I come back tomorrow morning. Cutting down on design time is a huge benefit of using the macro functionality. We can cut down on design time even further because these macros are not limited to just one component. It can be a piece of a schematic, maybe an entire schematic, or even multiple sheets from inside of a project. From a logistical standpoint, it also makes sense to use macros because when thinking about the bigger picture, our design team focuses on standardizing parts from project to project, which in turn helps us cut down on overall cost, allowing us to take advantage of vendor price breaks. I recently learned about another incredible feature that I know will help our team even more. The macro capability that I just preached about I can utilize it even further with a feature called Excel Automation. Every macro I create has a unique name. My team and I have worked together to create a standard naming convention for our macros. It's not necessary, but it definitely helps. In conjunction with creating each macro, I've also created an Excel spreadsheet that contains the name of each macro I want to use within a specific project. Using Excel automation, I can pick the appropriate spreadsheet and let Electrical Schematic Designer generate the schematic for me. I did not have to draw anything because it's utilizing the macros that I've already created and piecing them together automatically. Now, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to these spreadsheets. I've incorporated some unique formulas and, more importantly, a sheet that contains configuration options. This configuration is designed to enable specific macros based on fields selected from each drop-down list. Our design process begins even earlier now because my sales team has access to this spreadsheet through the 3D Experience platform which means they can capture customer desired specifications immediately, then send us the spreadsheet and we can run Excel automation. Talk about cutting down on design time. All right, let's get back to the automation equipment and dealing with those proximity sensors. With the addition of these new sensors, we should also consider updating our PLCs. Electrical Schematic Designer also provides intelligent PLC management tools. After deciding on the appropriate manufacturer part, I'll select Insert PLC and generate the schematic symbol automatically. 
I can even go as far as defining a specific macro for each I.O. port within the PLC. Now, when I insert the PLC, it will also include each I.O.'s associated circuit. This function provides me with a great starting point for my design and requires a lot less manual entry. As our project matures, there are still some additional steps I need to complete. Design Rule Check is another great tool worth mentioning. They're very similar to reports, but I like to run them while I'm in the middle of my design to make sure I'm moving in the right direction. There are a variety of different types of checks we can run. One example is wires without mark. At first glance, we can see that every wire in my project still needs a mark and therefore is listed here. So let's go ahead and take care of that now and number our wires. Wire numbering used to be a very manual process. It was always one of those tasks that I had to do, but I tried to ignore until I absolutely had to finish. That's just not the case anymore. With just two clicks of the mouse, my wire numbers have been added. Is there an engineering change that's going to mess up my entire numbering scheme? Okay, well, I'll delete them and then reassign the wire numbers. It's a lot less painful than the old method and gets our job done just that much faster. If we take a quick look at our design rule check again, we can see that the list is now empty. Now that we have wire numbers, it's only natural to want to generate our to from wire report. Within the report manager, we can take a look at the various report types our team requires for our drawing packages. We have our bill of materials, our to from wire report, a cabling report, and even a basic drawing list. Something that our integration and manufacturing team appreciates is that we can help them by generating a wire label report that they can simply import into the company's wire label printer. I can generate the reports and add them directly to the project. Another report that our integration team finds valuable is a terminal block drawing. This drawing is automatically generated based on the existing terminals within my project. One of my former responsibilities was generating this drawing by hand by manually entering information into a table while evaluating the schematic. Now I tell the software to do it for me. At this point, I can export the project. Electrical Schematic Designer provides the ability to export the project to DWG or PDF. A nice addition within the latest version of Electrical Schematic Designer I can also include any data files or spec sheets I've attached to my project. The PDF is a smart PDF and maintains links between items such as sheets and components. If I'm not ready to export to PDF, there's a slew of other functions I can utilize in regards to managing my project. I'm going to save my project back to the platform. I can either choose save or save with options. Our team prefers to use the save with options function because it allows us to perform operations such as changing the revision, changing the maturity state, locking the project, or even adding comments. Back over on the platform, I'll check 3D space to review that the changes have been processed. I can see that the project's maturity state is still in work. The revision has been updated and that the project is now locked to prevent anyone else from working on it. A PDF document of the new revision has also been created. Now that I've completed the task, I'll inform my manager Vandana by moving the task from in work to completed. Vandana will receive a notification and we can continue to move forward with the project. In summary, we just witnessed a typical interaction within the platform that included team communications, project planning, data storage, and schematic design capabilities, all of which only included the electrical engineering team. But what if we needed to share data and collaborate with our mechanical teams, our vendors, our contractors, or more importantly, our customers? 
Here at Smoothie Co., as we grow with the 3D Experience platform, our company and our electrical engineering team plan to create additional dashboards and communities where we can create content, share ideas, and interact on a personal level while securely organizing our data successfully. Electrical Schematic Designer along with the 3D Experience is the future of our business.